So I'm sure that by now most of you have noticed that as Bernie Sanders continues to surge, there's been an increase in pearl clutching as of late, not just by corporate news pundits, but by his 2020 rivals as well, because they're terrified and they realize that at this point, Bernie Sanders may be unstoppable. In fact, one political article describes how other Democratic candidates are privately conceding that at least when it comes to Nevada, they're basically competing for second or third place. So it's crunch time. They've got to do something. If they don't act, if they don't attack Bernie Sanders, they're done. So they're hanging on for dear life, but they realize that if they just directly attack Bernie Sanders, that's not going to land because, I mean, he's just more trusted on a lot of policy issues, immigration, healthcare. So you can't really attack him based on policy. And if you try to criticize him based on Medicare for All or something like that, he has this huge base of support who will dispel myths and misinformation. So what do they do to attack Bernie Sanders? They try to take on his biggest strength, one of his biggest assets, his supporters. So their goal, seemingly, is to attack Bernie Sanders supporters and demonize them in hopes that we'll all shut up and be quiet. Because if we self-censor and we don't defend Bernie Sanders, then that gives them a huge advantage. And look, it, I'm not saying that corporate news pundits and 2020 Democrats all met in one big, you know, smoke-filled room to discuss this strategy. But it's a narrative, and narratives tend to catch on when one person says it and others find it persuasive and they all just kind of parrot it. That's what happens. So now everyone is basically attacking Bernie Sanders' supporters. Last week, after bosses from Nevada's Culinary Union claimed that they were swarmed by vicious Bernie bros, after they of course lied about Medicare for All and were corrected, well, all of Bernie's rivals, almost simultaneously, including Elizabeth Warren, jumped at the opportunity to attack Sanders supporters, even knowing that this could hurt them, because, you know, they may need these people down the line if they do win the nomination. But I mean, still, they attacked Bernie Sanders supporters. You had Mike Bloomberg call out Bernie bros after we uncovered countless videos of him saying disgusting, racist, and sexist things. And after Joe Biden called on Biden bros to defend him on social media, he actually decided that, you know, online attacks are actually bad. <laughs> and he told NBC News, look, if any of my supporters did that, I'd disown them. Sure, Jan. And this is my favorite story because it was just a couple of weeks ago, just at the end of January when he was saying, can I please have some Biden bros, please? And now all of a sudden he's looking around and everyone is saying, Bernie bros are bad. Now he's saying, yeah, Bernie bros are bad, but please defend me online because I'm getting eaten alive because I have no supporters. It's just, it, it's pathetic. And it just reeks of desperation. But I get it. Bernie's the front runner. We were prepared for this. We knew that as he solidified his status as the front runner, these attacks would ramp up. But it's just interesting how aggressive they're being at attacking Bernie Sanders supporters. And it's not just 2020 candidates, because pundits have been doing this as well. For example, reporter David Atkins clutched his pearls in response to a Nevada poll where a Bernie supporter dared to poke fun at the other candidates by calling Biden gropey and Warren a snake and Buttigieg a rat, to which he responded, can you imagine if any other candidate supporters behaved like this? Hmm, yeah, I, I can't imagine a situation where anyone is worse than Bernie supporters, especially in 2016. I mean, it was definitely the case that Bernie supporters were way more aggressive online than Hillary supporters, correct? Oh, right, that's a load of horseshit, and this is just a bullshit narrative to persuade you to be quiet because they want you to think that you calling out bullshit, dispelling misinformation, and just fact-checking people is going to hurt Bernie Sanders, but it's not. And in fact, we have to push back against the mainstream media and other 2020 Democrats because they are beholden to the same multinational corporations who are hell-bent on taking down Bernie Sanders. But I mean, I don't want to be overly unkind to David here because he's not alone. There were certainly a lot of pundits at MSNBC who agreed that Bernie Sanders supporters really are the worst. Uh, you know, certainly, look, the Bernie, the so-called Bernie bros are out there. Those of us who have said or written anything negative about Bernie Sanders have heard about, heard from them, at least on occasion, certainly the other candidates do. But I myself have members of your communications team blocked on Twitter just because of even before this campaign, going back to 2016, just the nastiness gets so bad that you, that it's, it's unbearable. And you've got Sanders supporters, and these are real humans, not 
bots who will sick the Sanders legion on you if you just say Bernie Sanders in a non-smiling tone of voice. Like you, If you're not lauding him, you do get attacked by Sanders supporters. That's a real thing. Most of the black journalists I know who cover politics have experienced it, especially journalists of color. Now, when Joy Reid says that journalists of color are their main targets of Bernie bros, uh, she's making that up. She's pulling that out of her ass. She doesn't have statistics. She doesn't have data. And second of all, the 2020 Bernie bro, demographically speaking and statistically speaking, is a woman of color. So this narrative that it's all white bros who are brigading women of color that's bullshit. It was bullshit in 2016, and it's especially not true now that Bernie Sanders has created the most diverse coalition out of all the candidates. He is winning among non-white voters, so you can't keep parroting the lies that you said in 2016. And second of all, when it comes to Bernie Sanders supporters, I wonder, Joy, do they really have a legitimate reason to push back against you? Why would they criticize someone like Joy Reid? Hmm, I just can't figure it out. I mean, Bernie Sanders does have a sort of physicality, you know, when he when he talks. That yes. is a shaking your finger yes. at Hillary Clinton, yes. shaking your finger, shovey, weirdy. You know, his his physicality yes. makes me think. Yeah, he could have said, you know, listen, I think in this environment a woman can't win. That doesn't seem like a crazy well. First of thing all, I think he, I think Bernie's lying. We see him. He slouches forward anyway, Joy. But here he turtles. If you look at his eye level, where he normally answers questions, when he makes the denial, his whole shoulders come up like a little kid getting caught. His eye level is below his shoulders. This is trying to hide in plain sight. Listen, I've said this once, I'll say it again. This is nothing more than a narrative. They want to be able to viciously smear Bernie Sanders and spread misinformation, pro-corporate talking points about his policies, and not have anyone call them out, right? They're the media. They're the ones who have the authority. They're the ones who have a monopoly on political information. So how dare you criticize them for lying about your candidate? I mean, the thing about this is, look, liberals, they have this vision, not incorrectly, of Democrats, and whenever they face even the most minimal amounts of scrutiny, they roll over and die. But the thing about leftists, the thing about progressives and democratic socialists and Bernie Sanders supporters is that we're not like traditional Democrats. We don't just roll over and die. We actually stand up and defend ourselves because guess what? We're the good people. You're not the good people. We're the good people. We're fighting for justice. You're fighting for corporate profits. That's what you're fighting for. So when we call you out because you lie about something like Medicare for all, we're not inherently evil for calling you out. You're the evil ones because you are the ones protecting this pro-corporate capitalist status quo that is literally killing people. And we are fighting for the policies that would save lives or change lives for the better. So go cry about it some more, you rich fucking babies. And you see, the thing about social media is that they hate it because it evens the playing field. Like back in the early 2000s, they could lie about candidates. They can spread misinformation about certain policies and they get zero pushback. But on social media, it evens the playing field. We're actually able to call them out and respond directly to their lies about Bernie Sanders. And they hate that. They like being able to viciously smear a candidate, bring on body language experts to prove that they're lying and not have any pushback. But those days are gone. The peasants are revolting because we are absolutely done with the system. No more incrementalism. No more milquetoast neoliberals. I'm sorry, but people who have been hurt and oppressed by the system are not going to remain quiet. And that's what we're seeing in real time is rich people try to grapple with the fact that poor people actually kind of have a voice. And even if they think they can drown us out with their propaganda. We're not going away and we're not going anywhere. And they hate it so much, they're seething, they're crying about it because they can't take it. They can't take it. They don't like the fact that poor people have voices. They'd rather just rich explain and tell us to shut the fuck up and listen, but they can't do that anymore. <laughs> Those days are over. So this is why the Bernie bro myth is so pervasive because we have a voice and they don't want us to have a voice. They want to be the only ones with the voice. But again, those days are done. And if you're not angry, then you're not paying attention or you haven't been hurt or oppressed by this disgustingly capitalist, vicious system. Now, Michael Moore explained, I think, beautifully in an MSNBC uh, segment that people have a right to be outraged. It's not just Bernie supporters that are angry. Everyone is angry because we are hurting. Not so much the Bernie supporters that are angry. The country is angry. They're angry that they're having to live 
under the rule of Donald J. Trump. They're angry because they, they have to live from paycheck to paycheck. They're angry because they can't afford the daycare. They, can't, they don't know whether if they end up in the hospital, they're going to have to uh, lose their home as a result of it. Yeah, people are angry, and, and they don't want half measures anymore. Obamacare was great for what it did, you know, got rid of pre-existing conditions. The kids get to stay mm -hmm. under their 26. Uh, but it, does, it, it did not... It didn't go all the way. We have to go all the way. We can't. No more half measures on these things. Yeah, no more half measures. The half measures have not been working. We've been dealing with half measures for decades now, and we're more desperate, more demoralized than ever. So what we're saying now is enough is enough. We are drawing a line in the sand, and we're saying either you're with us or against us. We're not going to accept anything but a fundamental reshaping of this entire system. Now, you can cry about that. You can say that we're being mean and overly aggressive, but that's where we're at. Bernie Sanders supporters and poor people in general who have checked out of the process, they can't afford anything less but fundamental reform. These types of nibbling around the edges, these tweaks to the system, it's not going to work. We've tested that theory. We've tried it your way, and now we are demanding that we're going to do it our way. And look, maybe it's the case that individuals like Joy Reid they just really are ignorant. Maybe they're not actually, you know, angry that poor people finally have a voice through Twitter and whatnot. Because Bill Maher recently explained that he also thought that that stereotype of the Bernie bro, the white angry bro, was real. But he was educated and realized that, no, actually, that's not true. And Pramila Jayapal kind of helped shed light on this and explain that this coalition is huge. It's not just white men online. This is a diverse working class rainbow coalition and we need to acknowledge that because trying to pretend as if Bernie Sanders supporters are just white bros, that is erasing the diversity that is huge in this movement. Like this is what Democrats have been saying they want, like a diverse, multiracial, multi-ethnic working class coalition and now that they've got it in one candidate, well because it's not the candidate that they like, they're shitting on him, but Pramila Jayapal explains that this really is something that's special. Tell me about something that I've been reading about lately, that there is a myth of the Bernie bros. I, we had this image, I must admit, I did too. Doesn't look like me. No, <laughs> but you know, that it was mostly these younger, incel -y white men. And I, <laughs> I read the statistics and no. It, in fact, Bernie does worse with white men than anybody. And it's more women who are for him, more uh, Latinas. Well, how did we get it wrong, Twitter? Well, Twitter. I mean, I do think Twitter is a big part of it. People look at that and think it means everything. Right. But Bernie Sanders has assembled the most diverse coalition there is. He is energizing young people. He's got tons of women of color. He's got tons of people of color more broadly. Um, but he is also playing to uh, a, a forgotten group of blue collar workers who really believe he's going to fight for them. And that combination of this very diverse coalition of voters that have not turned out before, that frankly any other candidate would be thrilled to have this kind of coalition, he's got them, but he is also speaking to a lot of people that really feel like he will fight for them. I mean, just in 2016, we lost Michigan for the first time in 28 years. Democrats lost Michigan. We lost Wisconsin for the first time in 32 years. Mm. Guess who won 71 of 72 counties in Wisconsin? It was Bernie Sanders. So when you look at the appeal of Bernie Sanders, I think it is really unusual to have somebody who can do both things, really build that broader base, okay, but, but also play to these now, uh, Trump, some of them Trump voters. Yes. And she's exactly correct. Look, rather than telling angry Bernie bros to stop yelling, Maybe try listening, because the Bernie bros, which now the average Bernie bro is a woman of color, they're hurting. And as Aaron Stiggle explains on Twitter, I hear a lot about angry Bernie bros. What I don't hear a lot about is how the most diverse working class campaign in this race has the right to be mad because many of our livelihoods depend on Bernie Sanders becoming president. That is exactly it. To a lot of people, millions of Americans, this election is literally life or death because some people don't have health insurance and they need it. And they are hoping that Bernie's elected and is successful in passing Medicare for All. A lot of people 
can't spend any money because they are overwhelmed with student debt. Like this is a fight for our lives. So much is at stake. So for people in the mainstream media and other Democrats to just minimize this pain and suffering and just, you know, reduce it down to angry Bernie bros online, it's not just, you know, a gross oversimplification, but it's downright immoral because you are ignoring the voices of people who are crying out, who need help. And you're saying, no, 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 we're going to do it my way. We're going to tweak around the edges a little bit more. And that's the way it's going to be in perpetuity because uh, fuck you. That's why. Because we have corporate profits that need to be made. And I don't want to cut into those corporate profits because then these corporations might be mad at me for doing that and they won't donate to my campaign. Just listen to people. Listen to people. And even if you disagree, at least try to understand where Bernie supporters are coming from. These are normal people who are hurting, who need a candidate who they believe will fight for them. That's why you see so much passion. You may think that it's anger and vitriol, but this is passion from people. And maybe at times we do get a little bit angry. I have been a little bit angry on Twitter and, you know, I've snarkily tweeted at the candidates, but understand that there's so much at stake, literally life and death for a lot of people, literally about the habitability of our planet. Like if we don't elect Bernie, I don't see any other candidate with a platform that will save the planet like let alone the country but the planet we're talking about so there is so much at stake so at least try to understand and for those of you who refuse to understand or still don't care well if you're an elitist then i have nothing left to do but offer you the wisdom of anna kasparian if you can't take the heat get out of the kitchen and just log off so i'll leave you with that damn right we're <laughs> online we're, i'm i'm a, i'm considered a bernie bro and we're angry Get well, over it. Log well, off Twitter. Log off Twitter or grow a set of balls and move on with your life, okay? It's a campaign. And if they can't handle us emphasizing policy that makes him a superior candidate, then you're not cut out for politics. Log off.